Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Robius and today I bring you another episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History, the series where we compare the representations of characters and other elements depicted within one of the Assassin's Creed games to their actual history. Please be warned of major story spoilers ahead. For this episode we'll be exploring the history of the French politician Louis-Michel Le Pelletier, Marquis de saint fargeau To start we will explore his early life during the pre-game history, then we will cover his life in Assassin's Creed Unity during the in-game history, and lastly we will summarize the differences between his actual life and his portrayal in the game. Beginning with the pre-game history, Louis-Michel was born on May 29, 1760 to a wealthy family in Paris. As a young man he studied law and eventually found employment with the prison section of the Place du Châtelet. By 1785, through both his work and with the help of his wealth, he was promoted to avocat général, which would eventually lead to his election in 1789 to a position in the Parlement de Paris and his rank as deputy of the noblesse to the States General. Then, in reason of his conservative views in terms of abolishing the death penalty, he gained further popularity and was even made the president of the Constituent Assembly for around a month. Once serving in the Legislative Assembly, Le Pelletier was later made the president of the General Council for the Département de Yonne in 1791. This new post in turn aided him in also becoming a deputy to the convention. It would have been around this point where we first met Louis-Michel Le Pelletier in Assassin's Creed Unity as Arnaud eavesdropped on the Templar's conversation. Although the Armand de Fer incident which followed would be one of the main elements that eliminated any possibility of preventing the trial of the king, there aren't any records that Le Pelletier was the one to bring the information forward. Historically, having reached his new political position, Louis-Michel was therefore made a participant in the trial of the former king Louis XVI. Although historians still debate on the exact logistics of the final votes, some claim that Le Pelletier was one of the deciding votes in executing the former king under the circumstance of the votes numbering 361 for death and 360 against. However, as I said, these numbers are still somewhat debated. Apart from this important role, Le Pelletier was also a participant in the educational reformations that took place during the revolution. He was specifically a supporter for the Spartan education, which would have boys and girls educated in state-run schools where they would learn about the revolutionary concepts. It was for this, among multiple other reasons, that he received the support of Robespierre and other Jacobins. Prior to the king's actual execution on January 20th, 1793, Le Pelletier went to a restaurant in the Palais Royal. Once there, he was assassinated by Philippe-Nicolas-Marie de Paris, a former member of the king's bodyguard who had entered the restaurant with a sabre hidden in his cloak and upon arriving at Le Pelletier's table, stabbed him in the chest. It is generally accepted that Philippe escaped Paris and made it to Normandy as he was hunted by the authorities. Many state that at this point the assassin shot himself in the head prior to being captured, although some individuals still believe that Philippe was not the actual murderer and that the real killer escaped to England. However, this was never confirmed. After his death, Louis-Michel's daughter, Suzanne, was officially adopted by the nation of France and she became a celebrity who was referred to as the daughter of the state. It can also be stated that Louis-Michel Le Pelletier's death was famously immortalized in the painting of Jacques-Louis David. In summary, despite only having a short appearance in Assassin's Creed Unity's story, Louis-Michel Le Pelletier still held a rather important role in the events that took place. Among the notable differences between his actual life and his portrayal in the game are the fact that Unity depicted him as being the one who brought forth the information from the Armand de Fer incident, which was given to him by his Templar allies, when in reality he was not at all involved with these events. In addition to that, it should be noted that he was never a member of the Templar Order. Secondly, although I won't consider it a major difference, the representation of his vote being the final deciding factor in the king's death is still widely debated, and therefore this point might be considered somewhat inaccurate, depending on which sources you choose to believe. Lastly, Le Pelletier did not die by the hand of the assassin Arnaud Dorian, however if one is to believe that Philippe Nicolas Marie de Paris was not the killer, then this would represent another interesting use of some historical ambiguity to better fit the story. In conclusion, aside from these minor changes, Louis-Michel Le Pelletier's representation in Unity was rather well done because although he was a member of the then fictional Templar Order, he himself stated that his actions in terms of voting for the king's death had nothing to do with the Templar plot as he made his decisions to help France as a country instead of anybody's private agenda. With that final fact, we have finished another episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you did I highly recommend you try one of the Assassin's Creed games. Thank you all for watching. Please leave your suggestions for future characters, groups, events, or locations from any of the Assassin's Creed games that you'd like me to cover in the comment section below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you all in another historical episode. Good. I trust you can get this information into the proper hands, Monsieur Le Pelletier. Of course, Grandmaster. With this evidence in hand, the King's conviction is certain.